YouTube is full of mysterious channels, a few of which I've already covered. Some of the most intriguing ones are the ones which initially seem quite mundane, but there's actually a deeper and darker story behind them, like the one we'll be discussing today. Let's investigate. If you enjoy internet mysteries and generally disturbing content, feel free to subscribe and turn on notifications for more content like this. I also have a Patreon and a PayPal, so if you're interested in supporting the channel, feel free to check those out, links will be in the description. You can also leave me a tip by clicking the thanks under this video. Thanks to anyone who considers this. This video will contain vague discussions of topics that some might find distressing. Viewer discretion is advised. You can head over to my Patreon for an uncut and ad-free version of this video which features extra disturbing details that were unsuitable for this cut. This video is sponsored by The Ridge Wallet. I haven't even bothered using a wallet for a good couple of years now because my handbag is always filled with so much crap that the average wallet or purse just takes up too much space and adds unnecessary weight. And we all know how tiny the pockets on women's clothing are, so there's next to no hope of getting one small enough to fit in those. I've been making do with one of those flip phone cases, but in addition to the fact that you can only fit in a couple of cards before it won't close, I'm sick of people ripping into me and calling me a boomer because no one my age uses them, so I was super excited to try the Ridge wallet, and it didn't disappoint. I love that these wallets can fit up to 12 cards, plus room for cash, and the compact design means they will comfortably fit in your back pocket, even if you wear women's clothes. They're made from durable materials with RFID blocking technology that protects you from digital pickpocketers, and they come with a lifetime warranty. They have other equally awesome products, like this key case and this pen, also made from durable materials with a sleek design. You can get 10% off your order by clicking the link in the description and using the code Internet Investigator. And with every dollar you spend on the website before the 30th of September, you'll be entered to win a brand new upgraded Ford Bronco, or $75,000 in cash if you prefer. The winner will be announced in October. Before I get started, I just wanted to add in a quick disclaimer. The theories discussed in this video are not facts, and have either been summarised from comments on the videos, or are my own suggestions, though I don't necessarily believe them. This video is simply an exploration of the content, and not intended to spark a witch hunt or to falsely accuse anyone of any wrongdoing, so please do not make any attempt to contact or harass anyone mentioned in this video. Gazuela is a YouTube channel that has gained 11.3 thousand subscribers since it was created in March 2008. It started out as a relatively normal vlog channel. The first video, which was captured on the 1st of September 2011 and uploaded the day after, was titled Gaz Whaler's Webcam Video, September 1, 2011, 6pm, and was one of four videos showing the uploader, who was referred to as Kay, chatting with Pastor Scott from the Holy Cross Lutheran Church in Colorado, while others are decorating the room. Beyond Kay acting a little awkward, there doesn't seem to be anything out of the ordinary in these videos, just a day in the life of a normal American man. The next couple of videos are a little stranger. Titled Tommy Bahama Bird of Paradise Shirt at Verizon Star, they mostly consist of Kay just standing in front of the camera, talking with employees, and occasionally wandering off. Again, nothing too alarming, but enough to give the vibe that Kay might be a little odd. Then again, he could just be a typical middle-aged man that just discovered YouTube and wanted to document his life. The description of this video is a bit weird, though. I'm still putting this in the non-profits activism category because there might be some subconscious messages that are deeply of a political and religious nature. Many profound implications, sometimes of a subconscious nature. I'm not sure what subconscious messages can be gained from looking at a shirt with birds on it, but maybe I'm just not profound enough to understand the deeper meaning. The next few videos are recordings of a religious presentation. Kay's wearing his bird shirt again, so perhaps there's some kind of hidden meaning, but I doubt it. He then uploaded various short clips, most of them under 30 seconds, showing various random scenes that I assume were filmed in his local area. 
most are titled CIMG, then a number, dot AVI, which of course will be what the camera saved them as, and he changed a few of them to titles like Swing Sets Show the Results of Gravity, Crow After His Breathtaking Flight, and These Pigeons Involved in Controversy and Scandal. K continued to upload these random clips of things happening outside until the 4th of February 2012, when he uploaded a 26 second video titled Please Stay Still Star 1, that showed a young girl, who it turns out is his daughter, playing and laughing. This video gained over 1.6 thousand views, significantly more than the others before it, which typically got less than 100 views, some even less than 10, with the exception of a couple. The description simply reads, Video uploaded from my phone, and the comments are turned off, giving us little information to suggest why this video performed better than the rest, though the reason will soon become clear. From this point on, most of the videos on the channel are of Star, perhaps because Kay realised more people wanted to watch them than random shots of outside. Similar to the other vlog-style videos, nothing really happens in the clips of Star. We just see her talking to Kay, playing and engrossed in an activity like reading a book or playing on her phone. In June, Kay began adding Arabic words into the titles of his videos, which seem to refer to the month as they translate to words like Jamada I I, which means the sixth month of the Islamic calendar. This is potentially noteworthy, as while I haven't noticed Kay announcing on his channel that he converted, I don't think the church he was visiting in his earlier videos is an Islamic one. The website linked in the description is no longer live, but the church still exists, they just have a new website. I don't know enough about this specific religion to definitively state it has no ties with Islam, so feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but going off archives of the old site, it seems to be closer to Christianity, so the Islamic references in the titles could suggest that K converted. Anyway, as I said, the videos themselves are quite mundane, so why are some of them getting hundreds of thousands of views? The most popular video has 869,000 views and simply shows Star rolling around on a blanket on the floor. Well, if you've been on the internet for any length of time, you'll soon realise that where there are children, there are predators. A few of the comments on the videos are from concerned users who point out that the house the videos are filmed in doesn't look a particularly safe environment to be raising a child in. There is rubbish, clothes, toys, shoes and other items strewn across the floors, no sheets on the beds, the kitchen looks messy and unclean. Many of the commenters are too preoccupied with Star herself to notice this though. Some leave seemingly innocent remarks about her being a cute kid and how she reminds them of their children or grandchildren etc. Others aren't so innocent. The relatively new feature on YouTube where you can see which parts of videos have been replayed the most has been quite useful when investigating this channel. I was disgusted, but not really surprised, to notice that on many of the videos featuring Star, the most replayed moments are parts where she's in what could be seen as a suggestive position, or where parts of her body are showing, for example where her top is pulled up. In a video titled CIMG 3653.avi 1434, the most replayed moment is when Star is sitting on a chair upside down with her feet over the back, her stomach and hip bones can be seen. The second most replayed moment is where she's bending over and her jeans have fallen down slightly. This already gives a pretty clear indication of why people are watching these videos, and the comments confirm it. Some make inappropriate remarks about Star, commenting on the position she's in, etc. Others ask if they can be emailed more content, saying they'll pay for it. I'm sure you can guess what kind of content they're looking for. More recent ones note how she's 16 now, so they'll be safe talking about her in that way. It's really just a cesspit of creepiness. As far as I noticed, Kay hasn't responded to any of these. In fact, many of his older videos have comments turned off, so unless he's covering his tracks, I assume he didn't approve of those comments and didn't want people preying on his daughter. Perhaps comments haven't been turned off on the newer videos because he abandoned or lost access to the channel. The most recent upload was in September 2013. Still, some users are convinced that he's involved in something shady, with various accusations along the lines of him grooming Star and moving her to a Muslim country so he could marry her. Anything's possible, as right now there's not much context to give us insight into what's happening here, but from the videos on this channel alone, I don't see enough evidence to suggest this is the case. 
It seems to me that people notice there's something a little off, and because it looks like he's converted to Islam, they started making wild assumptions without anything to back them up. Kay actually created another channel in January 2011, Creestone Theatre, where pretty much all of the videos feature Star. Again, comments are turned off on most of them, so I dread to think what was being said, and the most recent upload was in May 2013, only a few months before he stopped posting on the Garzuela channel. That video shows Star wearing a hijab, as Kay mentions Allah, which is further confirmation that he is now a Muslim. Without digging too deep, there doesn't appear to be anything distinctive on this channel, it's very similar to the Garzuela one, with even more of a focus on Star. I also found what appears to be Kay's WordPress blog, started in December 2011, only three months after he started posting on YouTube. I assume this is his second blog, as the header reads, Gazuela Part 2, Gazuela Returns. This blog actually provides a lot of context that is missed out in the YouTube videos, and it's so much more bizarre than I initially thought. From the off, it's just post after post of crazy ramblings, of course many, many references to religion, and also conspiracies like UFOs, 9-11, the Illuminati, the occult. There are various misogynistic and homophobic remarks too. I had to skim through over 500 pages of posts, which literally took hours. I didn't read every single post word for word, or I'd probably still be at it now, but I've got a pretty good idea of the events that occurred from 2011 to 2017 when Kay stopped posting. I'll do my best to summarise this madness, but first, it might be useful to read a post made by Kay explaining his channel. Actually, the obsession with uploading YouTube home movies has implications beyond just home movie storage. The backbiting has calmed down and false rumours against me didn't stand so well when I started the new YouTube channels. I could upload for free as much as able, then they go in the YouTube archives. Reminds me of a new kind of theatre. So Kay basically uses YouTube as a way of archiving his home movies. I assume when he mentions the false rumours, he's referring to the ones about him taking Star abroad so he could marry her. Those rumours probably aren't true, but sometimes reality is just as disturbing as fiction. Around the time Kay started the blog and began uploading on YouTube, he was living with Star and his wife Monica, who was, and presumably still is, a Mormon. Kay was also a Mormon at this point, until February 2012 when he converted to Islam, after befriending some Muslims online and being in contact on Facebook for quite some time. Naturally, this seemed to cause animosity within the family, especially considering Kay wanted Star to become a Muslim too. There were problems in the marriage prior to this, and the conversion only magnified them, with Kay appearing to resent Monica and her family because they were Mormons, and Monica and her family opposing Kay's plans to convert Star to Islam. Kay was unemployed, and Monica was on disability but working full-time because according to him, she couldn't look after Star for too long. Kay is quite open about his mental health struggles, stating that he has suffered with depression, anxiety and psychosis on and off for many years. He said he had a nervous breakdown in the late 90s because he gave his daughter with his previous partner up for adoption. He was hospitalised at one point and has since developed a disliking for hospitals for mental health treatment, referring to them as death traps. After he left the hospital, against the doctor's advice it sounds, he was homeless and lived in a tent for quite a while before Monica's family took him in, though he seems to believe they have an ulterior motive every time they do something nice for him. He also suffers from epilepsy and seems to experience periods where he has quite frequent seizures, so he self-medicates with cannabis. I assume his health problems are why he hasn't always been able to take a leading role in taking care of Star, and as a result, Monica's mother was very involved in raising her. The way Kay talks about his wife and her family becomes progressively derogatory. He's not initially set on divorcing her, but he talks about finding a second wife, as polygamy is acceptable in some Muslim cultures, and spoke to an agency to help him do so. I have no idea whether or not Monica was aware of this, though it's not the first time he's considered cheating on her. He began referring to Monica and her family as all-day Satans, and other less polite insults. 
He also made various wild accusations that of course we have no way of verifying, such as that they kidnapped Star and forged his signature so they could take her to Italy, that they are involved in extortion schemes, and that they rent rooms to illegal immigrants who Kay thinks will put Star at risk. In addition to what Kay said about his wife, his comments about other women are misogynistic at best and outright predatory at worst. He said Monica had a quote, unattractive Peruvian woman move in until her mother kicked her out because she didn't like her. Quote, I was like, thank you Allah, I wasn't even remotely attracted to her and she didn't even know English and she sucked on her teeth and had annoying habits that made me have seizures because I was so irritated. And it gets so much worse. Next, a woman from the Dominican Republic moved in and he had this to say. Captives whom your right hand possess, because my male libido is severely neglected in this dysfunctional Mormon marriage, but maybe Allah is starting to draw me a path towards purity. So how unchaste am I allowed to be with female slaves whom my right hand possess? Back in the good old days, you could probably tie up your female captives until they show some obedience. I think I have to let this one come and go as she pleases and let follow her cues about unchast inclinations. At some point, his posts are all over the place so it's hard to work out exactly what happened when. Kay and Monica broke up, he moved into his own apartment and was seeing Star around once a week. Struggling to make ends meet, he spoke about moving to Indonesia, hopefully with Star, so he could raise her as a Muslim without opposition from her mother's side of the family. How he planned to take care of her alone when he and his wife both struggled together, I have no idea, but things didn't go to plan anyway and he remained in America for a couple of years. There was a commotion at Star's 8th birthday party after she was accidentally hit with a broom by her cousin which caused her eye to bleed. Kay didn't believe it was an accident and this culminated in him getting kicked out of the house, so he banged on the window until it broke and Star's cousin's father punched him in the face. Kay's hostility towards Monica and her family grew significantly over time and he even started entertaining the possibility of physically harming them, quote, My stability in a Muslim community support system isn't enough to ward away these Mormon vultures in their own territory. I wish you had a child who the Mormons had pre-scheduled to raise Mormons so you could see how difficult it is to refrain from physical violence when Satan attacks your child through your in-laws. I think I may physically injure a Mormon since I haven't figured out how to take my daughter and physically leave them. There really is nothing haram about killing Mormons. In another post he said, On a personal level, I think I have a rough outline of my Islamic responsibilities. There is no harm on the day of judgement if I kill a polytheist who was oppressing or preventing my family from normal worship. When Monica's mother threw away Star's Arabic alphabet, he asked if he was lawfully allowed to decapitate her yet. And the contemplations of violence weren't just reserved for Monica and her family. He also said this, Tie him behind a car and drag him down the street till dead. This state has no laws anywhere. I can't even raise my own daughter, who I have legal custody over, or remove her from this cult. Next option, start to murder the general authorities. Unsurprisingly, not long after these worrying posts, Kay claimed that he was contacted by the FBI who told him not to talk about harming his in-laws on the blog anymore. This was only two days after he was paid a visit by the police, specifically the Internet Crimes Against Children unit, who apparently needed access to his account to communicate with, quote, internet stalkers who have been leaving bad comments in my comments area of my home videos, and I wasn't even aware of it because I don't receive notifications of YouTube video comments. I'm not a cop, so I don't really know how they would investigate such comments, but I'm not sure how plausible it is that they took over his account to communicate with the commenters, and I suspect, without any evidence, just a hunch, that they might have been suspicious of K himself as well. I have no idea if the FBI and local police continued to monitor care as he doesn't provide any updates on those situations. Considering he continued posting quite frequently, I doubt he faced any legal consequences. Over the next couple of years, after he moved to Peru, Kay's attitude towards his daughter changes from concern to resentment as he believes Monica's mind games have turned her against him. When Star was ignoring him for some length of time, he said, Star is really being an arrogant snob to me. He also said about Monica's family, 
You all already try and start to treat me like I'm dead, just like my mum does. This makes me wonder if Star actually had valid reasons for ignoring him. Maybe she decided she doesn't want anything to do with him anymore. Notice how he says that his mum treats him like he's dead, and he also believes that Monica and her whole family are against him, and two points come to mind. The first is, if everywhere smells like shit, check your own shoe. According to Kay, no one is on his side, and that could be because they're all evil, or it could be because Kay is actually the problem and he's misrepresenting the situation on his blog. You might notice from some of the posts that this blog reads like Kay's internal monologue. He uses it like a diary to vent about his life with no filter, and I don't really consider him to be the most reliable source of information. Furthermore, we really have no idea what the family's attitude towards him is, and considering paranoia often manifests into a feeling that everyone is against you, this, in addition to some of his conspiratorial ramblings, could suggest that he is on the verge of, or in the midst, of another breakdown. Kay's anger towards the situation and his daughter briefly subsided as he tried to convince himself that not being in contact with her might actually be a good thing. Quote, Star probably would have brought me misery because I'm too poor to buy her an iPhone anyway, since that's all American girls her age care about. She seems like she would have been a really disobedient, ungrateful daughter until she was in wealthier hands than mine anyway, since Gladys and my mum taught her that money always wins, not legal rights or moral values. That's good Ella removed such an ungrateful, disobedient daughter from me since she was raised to be that way by her adult delinquent caretakers. Up until this point, although he had made various crass and vile comments about women in general, none were directed at Star, and considering he seemed to condemn the inappropriate comments on the videos of her, stating at one point that he thought they were disgusting, I was pretty convinced that he wasn't actually a peeper. A strange man, for sure, but not a peeper. Then I saw a post from December 2016 in which he spoke about how Star doesn't have the assets, so to speak, to show off to the camera like her cousins. This isn't necessarily damning evidence per se, but it's still Kay talking about his daughter in a very inappropriate way. Why is he even mentioning certain body parts of a child? Around this time, he also started talking about having a captive slave girl and described in sickening detail what he'd do to her. I'll spare the details in this cut, let's just say it was very explicit. In another post, he said a cute girl was being friendly to him online, so he sent her articles about Islam marriage and weddings, hoping she would be up for what he calls a wedding contract. Quote, Ask Ella to bring her to Fitra, natural inclination to righteousness to marry a man like me, even if she is really young. Who cares? At least she might understand the material. There's girls my age who will never understand. They think adultery is a lifestyle when convenient. I don't know and kind of don't want to know what he meant by her being really young. I just hope she's actually an adult. In January 2017, Kay made yet another worrying post, quote, Could be a week of house napping, robbing houses. I wanted a house over on Avenida, where San Martin de Porres meets Calleo. I suppose in theory I'm getting prepared for a pretty potential-filled jihad and expedition because I walk into the battle alone, with two prisoners in my possession already. I ain't paying no monthly rent to no one. This is home invasion, hostile takeover. More quiet, no more living by this television set of an old woman. It's time for family the Islam way. Polygamy with minors. Hey, don't start joking around about religion. This is serious. I don't know whether or not he was joking with the minor comment. Either way, his comments are getting creepier and creepier, not to mention the fact that he announces his intention to rob houses. In the years since his divorce, he had been in various relationships. One was with a woman called Helen, who had four children, and Kay noted that one of them looked enough like Star for spending time with her to be therapeutic to him. Seeing as Star pretended like he was dead and doesn't exist, then complains that he doesn't like her or that he's mad at her. He shared what appeared to be emails between him and some of these women he was in some kind of a relationship with. I'm not sure if they were aware or not. To say Kay is an oversharer is a massive understatement. Out of nowhere popped up another daughter too, Katie. I couldn't even work out how old she was or what happened, apart from the fact that he was 99% sure he was her father, even though her mother cast some doubt on it. 
Next thing you know, Kay is talking to another woman he wants a relationship with and believes she feels the same. He describes her as, like a grown-up star. I obviously don't need to elaborate on how unsettling that is. In May, Kay revealed he had added Star's friends on Instagram, quote, Why don't you tell your friends who said it was creepy that I was talking to them? Tell them how creepy you are that you pretend that you don't have a dad. The reason I was talking to her friends, even if I am a 42-year-old pervert, that's not why. I added all her friends about a year ago to embarrass her because she likes to pretend I don't exist. She says it's because I'm being a creepy 42-year-old and that was the intention. To embarrass her because she is such a stuck-up snob. Yeah, totally not creepy. Despite this incident, Star was supposed to stay with Kay in Peru for a month because, according to Kay, Monica and her family know that she has more potential and ability than them, so they want to send her to him, hoping she'll get kidnapped and assaulted. It wasn't long before Kay found two more, surrogate temporary replacements for Star, as he called them, who were Star's distant half-cousins. He said he began to realise that he lost grip of Star two and a half years ago, and the UFOs and his surrogate daughters helped him cope with the stress so he didn't have a full nervous breakdown. He constantly seems to switch between wanting Star in his life and being happy she isn't because she's spoilt, arrogant and ignores him. There's rarely a middle ground. In August 2017, one of Kay's posts read, before bipolar, quenchua man-haters, Monica and Helen, before they sabotage my life, it's time to work on the clothing and publications business. Monica's already advising me not to take an underage girl. I'm not planning on taking Alejandra or Star. I'm planning on rescuing them while I watch their bipolar witch women crash and burn. While I watch them in self-sabotage because they don't have a man to drag down with them. Then I'll rescue Star and Alejandra from them. I wish I could say I didn't think he was considering kidnapping these children, but at this point, I'm honestly not sure. Just a few days later, Kay dialed it up a few notches and said this. Time to start plotting to kill someone, since they won't give Star back and I have no future anywhere. Too poor to start over with a new family. Guess it's time to calm down so I can decide who to kill and how to get away with it, since you can get away with anything. Look at all you've gotten away with. You kidnapped my daughter, stole my inheritance, extorted all the SSI checks to build your apartment units in Peru. Why should these Mormons live comfortable and happy? I'm gonna kill them. Nothing I'd be more happy to see than Mormon missionaries with blood-soaked white shirts. In Kay's next post, he explained that he had some very strong weed and no longer wanted to kill anyone. Quote, very strong weed, very strong. I download my physical assault plots, now they are only stalking plots. If your sisters say they get reports of me on Avenida San Juan frequently, then I am only stalking them, seeing if their daughters are kidnappable. Now I don't want to kill anyone, only kidnap a Mormon's daughter. One daughter for one daughter. These things must be done delicately. Now I am going to San Juan to stalk and prepare to kidnap, not kill. Weed is strong, intent has been downgraded. If this wasn't such a serious matter, it'd be hilarious that he acknowledges that murder was a bit extreme, but totally lacks any self-awareness of how extreme it would be for him to kidnap an innocent child. Only two days later, he was set on murder again. I was just walking down Avenida San Juan last night at 9.30pm, Monica's old neighbourhood, on the way home from the factory outlet. It is 30 to 40 cents in American currency to go over there and kill one of Monica's brothers or sisters when they visit there. If they don't start being more sensitive to Star, then I will kill one of Monica's brothers or sisters when they visit there. And I might even get away with it. So I can kill another one and another one and another. The following month, after talking about murdering his neighbours too, and mentioning that Star has depression, he posted... I know Star's depression will go away once all your brothers and sisters are dead. You shouldn't have sided with them. And I could get on a bus and be to your house in San Juan in 15 minutes. Too bad you were such a terrible wife. Now some of you will have to die since you already proved I'm an unfit father on my own. You and your family will do this. I think about how to kill them all the time now. You should have left me alone and not keep telling me you were bringing Star to me starting last March 2017. 
I didn't ask for her till you made me drop everything I was doing to come prepare to receive her in a nicer residence. Now I prepare to kill them. There is nothing to look forward to. I don't believe you. I'm buying a knife soon. I saw a really big one in Chinatown. While some of Kay's earlier posts could be passed off as jokes in bad taste, the more recent ones are extremely concerning, and it sounds like he's actually spent time ruminating on the idea of committing murder. At this point, Star is 12 years old and Kay hasn't seen her in over four years. When I was reading through the post where he's calling her stuck up, arrogant, ignorant, and showing such hostility towards her, I didn't do the math and just assumed she was like 17 or something, she was actually around the age of 11 or younger. When he spoke about her not having the body to show off on Instagram like her cousins, she was 11. When he added all her friends on Instagram to embarrass her, they were all 11. At 12 years old, Star has been the unwilling central character of Kay's crazy ramblings for years. Private details of her life plastered on the internet for everyone to see, a family slandered, all by her own father. I don't really know what the truth of this bizarre situation that has spanned six years is. We only have Kay's side, which can only be described as disjointed fragments. I highly doubt he revealed everything that was happening, and I wouldn't be surprised if he outright lied about many details. Either way, Star is the victim here, and it saddens me to wonder how much this must have affected her growing up. She'll be 17 now, and I can only hope her mother's side of the family isn't as bad as Kay makes out, because her father certainly doesn't seem to be a good influence on her life. It's worth noting that while I don't condone any of Kay's actions, and I'm not a psychologist, it seems quite clear to me that he is mentally ill, so I want to remind everyone again to not make any attempt to contact him. We know he has a history of psychosis and paranoia, and from his posts, we can tell how erratic his behaviour is. He stated he didn't like hospitals, referring to them as death traps, and expressed distrust in conventional medicine, particularly treatments for mental illness. So it's fairly safe to assume that if he was suffering another breakdown, he probably wouldn't have sought treatment, and instead spiralled to who knows where. All that said, Kay is a potentially dangerous man, I don't know what he's like when his mental health is under control, but all these threats of violence are a cause for concern, and quite frankly, I don't think he should be around Star in the state he's in, or people in general for that matter, as who knows if and when his murder and kidnap plans could become a reality. The last post on the WordPress site was on the 21st of October 2017 and read, Okay, it's still a battle between extended family kidnappers, my mum and stepdad, uh, stepdad, but wish he was dead, and then the ex-wife kidnapper family of 10 plus 12 more cousins, many of whom were robbed from other divorced spouses. And I'm just still sitting here waiting in Peru four and a half years later of not seeing my daughter, since I don't have a kidnapper team like them. Kay's blog ended on a bit of a cliffhanger, and I worried that he might have decided to take matters into his own hands and actually harm someone. I searched online quite extensively to see if I could find any news articles, court records, or even obituaries that might shed light on the outcome of this situation, and all I managed to find was a guardianship lawsuit for Star that was filed in May 2019. The names of the petitioners listed on this record were not names I recognised from the blog, though the surname does match Monica's surname, so I assume they are family members, more distant than Star's grandparents. I also found a Tumblr blog and another YouTube channel run by Kay that he was posting on more recently. At a quick glance, the Tumblr page could be mistaken for a teenage girl's. It's full of reposts of celebrities, fashion, food, photos of kids and the occasional funny post. There are some text posts that seem to imply the situation hasn't changed much. At the time, Star was still staying with her mother's side of the family, and Kay is still accusing them of being involved in various shady activities, from kidnapping and human trafficking to satanic rituals and terrorism. He alleges that they sold Star into adult entertainment when she was 16, and while we'd need more information to definitively say one way or the other, for all we know, they might be as bad as him or even worse. I highly suspect that this is yet another delusion, and if there is any truth to what Kay is accusing them of, it's likely highly exaggerated. The videos on the YouTube channel imply that Kay continued on his downward spiral, 
We see him looking disheveled, chatting and ranting incoherently to himself and the camera, which is worrying, though at least his freedom and presence online suggests that he hasn't actually harmed or kidnapped anyone, or at least that he hasn't been caught. Kay's most recent online interaction I was able to find was in May this year, when he posted in a Facebook group, still talking about how Monica's family have groomed Star and are trying to get her to be a drug mule, the same kind of shit he's been spouting for around a decade at this point. It's been nine months since he last posted on his Tumblr blog, so perhaps Kay has moved to a new channel or blog. I doubt he's put an end to his crusade against Monica's family and Mormonism in general. Due to the guardianship lawsuit, I have to presume that for some reason Monica is no longer able to take care of Star, perhaps because of her illness. Kay mentioned she was disabled and had schizophrenia, or because she was deported, as Kay said years ago that was a possibility. I did come across a website that mentioned a lawsuit and court record for Monica in 2018, though no further details were provided, so I'm not sure if this has anything to do with the guardianship lawsuit. Although it's tragic that Star seemingly couldn't rely on either of her parents, perhaps she's in better hands now. This story honestly took a totally different turn to what I expected. I plan to just do a relatively short video on the YouTube channel, as that alone is strange enough. Then I came across the blog, and it turns out there's so much more to this. I don't know what Kay's intentions were with the videos on his original channel. I can't rule out him being a predator himself, especially considering some of his blog posts. Though I don't see any solid evidence to suggest the videos were some kind of advert for CP or anything like that, even though that's what some of the commenters were clearly seeking. When all is said and done, I see this as a baffling and unfinished tale of a highly unstable man who bit by bit lost everything. His wife, his daughter, even his mind. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts and theories in the comments, plus suggestions of other internet mysteries you'd like me to cover in the future. Thanks again to Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this video. Remember to click the link in the description and use the code Internet Investigator to get 10% off your order. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing, and leaving a tip by clicking the thanks under this video. Huge thank you to my patrons, whose names are on screen now. I really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Thursday in a new video.